Hey, I'm Kevin, and today I'm going to show you how I made this wooden Game Boy in the Kevbot Workshop. Welcome back to the Kevbot Workshop. Today I have something really exciting. I'm going to show you how I made this walnut wooden Game Boy. So what I did here was take the electronics from a Game Boy Color and put them inside of a wooden Game Boy shell. So before I show you how I made this, let me talk about the specifics of the game. So this project, I have a couple of things that I'm going to be doing with it. I'm going to look to make this shell. So there's a couple of things I have to think about is this curve on the back here, straight face. I'm actually going to put in a lithium rechargeable battery so that you can run this as much as you want. So the second thing I have here is that uh, is another screen for this. So this screen actually does not light up. The newer, the newer Game Boys do, but this one is a screen that will. So I'm gonna install that one into this Game Boy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, is that I'm gonna get this stock ready and figure out where the Game Boy is actually gonna be. I'm probably gonna oversize it just a little bit so I have extra. I can always trim it down afterwards, but I wanna work on the inside stuff for all the mechanics first before I move on to the outside and getting it all, all worked out. To start, I removed all the electronics, which was pretty easy. You just need to make sure you have the special screwdriver to take apart Nintendo products. To release the screen, we gotta click these guys out. That'll be able to remove this, so we're gonna take this guy. We're also gonna place it in here, keep it nice and safe. So now I'm going to take this over and I'm going to start cutting this apart so that I can get this ready. I'm going to leave a little bit extra because I'm going to joint and plane this wood so that it, I can get it more accurate. All right, so now I have my stock ready for actually working on this. Uh, one last thing I did off camera was that I cut this down on the bandsaw just to be a little thinner. As you can see here, the uh, back screen and front screen are two different thicknesses. So they are a lot closer to the actual thickness of the front and back, but I left just a little extra so that I can have a little more stability and they're not super weak uh, or flimsy. Next thing I'm going to be working on is actually hogging out all the material that I need to to get on the inside here and have the board sit in correctly and all the buttons in place. So the first thing I'm going to do here is actually drill out the holes for the buttons and the screen here in the back. To remove the bulk of the material, I used a coping saw, but a file was really best to sneak up on the perfect fit. So now I have a lot of the carving done on the back side. There's still a lot more I need to do for it. So what I'm gonna do next is that I need to lower the entire inside just a little bit so that I can uh, actually place the board in and it, it can stay in there. And then after that, I need to come in here 
and I need to get uh, the screen size in place so that it can sit in there nice and flush. So I'm gonna use a router to take away most of the material just at the beginning, and then I'm gonna use the router one more time and come back in here just for the screen. This fits in just nicely. For the screen, it was simply an inlay job. I was able to use the glass and some painter's tape to set the depth on the router to cut out the material. I then came back with a chisel and sandpaper to get the perfect fit. To mark for the holes for the audio, I used some spray adhesive and paper so I can see my pencil marks. After that, I used an awl to mark the location for drilling. The back is a lot different from the front. The front had a lot more intricate things on the inside. The back, though, doesn't have much. I really have to remove the bulk, like all this will be taken out, all this, all this, and this cut through here. The thing I have to worry about here is this piece here and this piece here because they have to be a certain amount of thickness so when the game actually goes in that it lines up with the board on the back so that the game can actually go in and click into place. So I have to make th these two pieces the right amount of thickness so that it can fit in there, but I also don't wanna make them so brittle that they break. So I'm gonna hog out most of the material here, just make sure that I have uh, raised spots for my screws and that I can work on this area here, but then I'm gonna have to come through with a Dremel and actually mold the, the pieces to curve it, and then we can curve the back and make it look all nice. I used a feeler gauge to set my plunge depth for the screw holes. Same as the feeler gauge, I used a scrap piece of wood to find my plunge depth for this part. Alright, so we're now a lot closer to where we actually have to be. I don't need this battery area here, so this area down here is actually going to be scooped out. I'm going to use a Dremel tool to get in there and actually round that out so that I can have like a rounded back like this over here. Uh, we have the space for the game over here, and so the back is actually almost done. It's not that hard. I just have to smooth things out, and I actually will have to start cutting for the different ports and stuff like that. Uh, and making sure that we're all in place. And then we can see if this thing can come together. Let's do this. Now that I have the majority of the interior done, we're gonna switch over and work on the electronics. For this, I followed a tutorial, so I won't go super in depth on this, but I will leave a link in the description down below. Adding the new screen is very simple. You just insert a ribbon and have to solder a connection from the VCC on the screen to the VCC on the board. 
Since I'm adding a rechargeable battery, I can remove these two terminals from the board. What I'm gonna work on right now is the actual battery and the charging unit for this. This is gonna be what's gonna be charging our battery. You can plug a USB right into this end here. So the other thing I have here is this charging piece so that I can actually cut this out in a piece of wood and I'll put it wherever I want. I can put it in the side here, I can put it in the bottom. I think I'm actually gonna do this side, but I'll see when I, when I get there. Uh, and these actually come really cheap because I accidentally bought a whole bunch of them. So I got a bunch here, but I also had five of these packages. So just watch what you're buying. So now I got this finally together. Uh, I was able to hook this up to here and I have this little plastic thing on here as well. So I'll be able to move this around on the board and put this into the wood wherever I wanted it to go. And I think I'm gonna put it either here or on the other side, one of the two. Um, so right now, I'm just going to go ahead and test to make sure that I'm actually getting power to it. And so this uh, micro USB. Lights lighting up, so that's a good sign. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attach the battery so I can get that charging. And then from there, we'll use these other wires to attach it to the board. And then it should be able to power up the Game Boy. And we'll see if that, that screen that we put on works and all that. All right, now that I have the battery attached there, I should be able to start charging this or test to see if it's charging. So that blue light should turn to red. Awesome. So I think it's charging right now. I'm gonna let that go and charge up the battery some so we can attach this to the board and see if it all turns on. All right, after a few more minutes of messing with this thing, I think I got everything together. I had to take the screen off and put it back on just so I can move this thing around. I can glue things down. I just have to make sure this actually works now. So this is the moment of truth. Yes! 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 So that the faces meet up without any gaps, I ran them over with some sandpaper to make them flat. With that, I can cut close to the final size and sneak up to the line with a sander.
Now that I have the final walls, I can cut a slot for the charging port. If you're wondering about volume control, I actually haven't figured that out yet. I need to figure out how I can turn the wheel and reach it from the outside. Plus I want to add a better speaker, so I'll do that with a second modification. For right now, I'll just keep the audio down and play with it that way. So what I have here is a little piece that I made. This is actually from the original Game Boy. It's what they used uh, as a little click to turn it on, the switch here. But I grinded it down so I can add this uh, piece of wood here because I needed to extend it a little bit more out. And here's the actual switch. So you can turn the game on and off this way. But I need to be able to reach that. So what I did here was make this so that it can sit on the outside here and right along the edge. I'll show you when it's all put together. This was a challenging project to work on. There were many intricate details that took a lot of thought and care. Working on this project was really fun. Taking something and making a wooden version is something I would like to explore more in the future. So if you have an idea of something I should make a wooden version of, leave it in the description down below. If you like this project, I have many more coming out in the future, so hit that like and subscribe button so you can get a notification when they come out. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time in the Kebbot Workshop. Workshop.